Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Elizabeth Wallace, and I'm Executive Director of the Mobile Healthcare Association. And I'm so glad you could join us for today's webinar. Um, one quick bit of business. Um, registration is open for the 17th Annual Mobile Health Clinics Virtual Conference. We are going to be virtual this year. Um, and our theme is resilience, leading out of adversity, driving towards hope. Um, our pre-intensive um, conference will be on the 22nd with the main conference on the 23rd and 24th. We've kept um, registration really reasonable and got some exciting speakers um, and workshops planned. And so I hope you and your team can join us with no travel cost um, being necessary. And also if you could mute yourself, if you are not muted, that'd be wonderful. Um, and now it is my great pleasure to introduce Vineet Singhal, CEO and co-founder of Care Message, who's going to be speaking with us today about Care Message Lite, a donor funded program focused on COVID-19 information and vaccination. Vineet, thanks and welcome. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, really appreciate it. Um, uh, it's been great to get to know MHA and get to know the great work that the organization does. Um, you know, we uh, had no idea prior to uh, speaking with you a few weeks ago that there's an association that, that uh, you know, supports and, and uh, creates uh, synergy between all the amazing organizations nationally that are providing healthcare uh, to folks um, in need um, in, a, in, a, in a mobile capacity. Um, you know, we've been working with mobile clinics uh, for a long time uh, and we uh, have really enjoyed supporting them. In fact, one of our first ever partners at Care Message was Teen Health Man, which is a mobile health clinic uh, that's affiliated with Lucio Packard Children's Hospital in uh, Palo Alto, uh, California. So uh, just amazing uh, work that uh, you and your members are doing. And, and we're just honored to be uh, presenting uh, on our work and, and have one of our mobile health clinic partners, uh, Plan A, uh, sharing their executive director, sharing uh, a little bit about the work that um, we've been able to do together. Um, so uh, excited to, to have Dr. Uh, Caroline Weinberg uh, on this call uh, to share a little bit about uh, her and Plan A's experience uh, using Care Message for the purposes of communication. Um, I'll talk more, more broadly about um, Care Message as an organization and excited to share more about uh, what we're doing, but I specifically want to uh, talk about CM Lite, which is a, a, a tool that we've been offering at no cost to organizations across the country that's philanthropically supported uh, uh, ever since the beginning of COVID. Um, and in the last year, um, this tool, which is, which is made free, available uh, at no cost to organizations that are supporting safety net populations, we've been able to support over uh, 200 uh, healthcare organizations in the safety net in the last 14 months um, since we launched CM Light uh, at the end of March 2020. Uh, and in total, we've been fortunate to support these organizations and, and facilitate um, almost 50 million messages around COVID uh, in the last uh, 14, 15 months. Everything from driving communication around testing to social distancing to communication more recently around the COVID vaccine. Um, and then just really excited to share that not only are we making CM Light available to organizations uh, for the purposes of COVID communication, but we realize that a lot of organizations are looking to communicate with patients uh, around other gaps in care that have been uh, ignored or neglected as a consequence of the pandemic. So we are making CM Light available, not just for COVID outreach and COVID vaccine communication, but uh, for other uh, gaps in care tied to cancer screenings or other immunizations or diabetes or hypertension uh, uh, examinations and, and things like that. So uh, excited to share more about that expanded vision for CM Light and, and what organizations that are interested in utilizing CM Light can expect uh, to, to receive uh, as part of this offering that we're making available through the end of 2021. Um, just to kind of share a little bit about Care Message and our history, uh, we are a nonprofit uh, health technology organization. Uh, we were founded at Stanford uh, University in 2012. We launched at the end of 2013 in, uh, in, uh, at a free medical clinic in San Francisco in the Tenderloin District uh, that used Care Message for or the first ever version of Care Message to reach out to uh, women who were experiencing homelessness to get them to come in for mammography appointments in the Tenderloin District in San Francisco. Um, and they were able to, using our, our platform, reduce their no-show rate from 50% to below 5% uh, 
for these mammogram, mammogram appointments. Uh, and ever since then, we have uh, expanded uh, the list of use cases uh, for care message, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, specifically. Um, I already talked a little bit about our COVID, uh, broader COVID response, but we've also seen a huge amount of communication, especially in the last few months around the COVID uh, vaccine, uh, specifically almost 10 million messages around the COVID vaccine. Um, so I mentioned briefly uh, CM Light, uh, and that's a free solution that's made available through philanthropic support from Johnson & Johnson, uh, Salesforce.org, KKR, and other funders. It's free for a minimum of 60 days. If organizations want to use it longer, we can grant extensions uh, depending on um, an organization's ability to uh, leverage the platform to its full potential. But we also have, obviously, uh, the full platform, which we have been making available um, you know, since 2013. And that includes a lot of the functionality that's within the CM Lite, but also includes additional functionality around appointment reminders, uh, health education programs, and patient satisfaction surveys, patient referrals. There's a lot of lot more functionality. It's a fully integrated uh, platform for patient communication as opposed to CM Lite, which is by design, designed to be an unintegrated standalone platform where you can just upload a list of your patients uh, through an Excel spreadsheet and start messaging them. Um, talking specifically about uh, CM Lite and uh, the platform that we are we have been making available, and and obviously as I mentioned, uh, we have been uh, continuing to expand the uh, use uh, use cases for CM Lite in the last few months, and and more recently have decided to expand uh, the level of uh, support uh, to not just include COVID, but also other gaps in care that organizations might be looking to help address for their populations, but specifically talking about COVID and talking about the COVID vaccine in particular, um, you know, we have developed uh, with uh, our vaccine advisory board uh, messaging that specifically uh, enables organizations to reach out to patients around the COVID vaccine, um, be able to provide availability to understand what concerns patients have uh, to collect survey information around uh, you know, whether or not somebody uh, has been or hasn't been vaccinated. If so, where they got the vaccine, when they got the vaccine, if not, why not, uh, and what specific concerns they might have uh, being able to provide education. We've had uh, partners that have created short videos that um, it might be the, the uh, chief medical officer or a physician talking in front of a camera um, about why uh, they encourage vaccination and then sending that link uh, through a text message to, to the entire patient population in a couple of minutes. We have seen those be extremely helpful and, and successful. So there's just an enormous breadth uh, of, of possibilities when it comes to uh, what is possible and uh, you know, coordinating transportation, providing social emotional support, helping address um, you know, uh, other challenges like food and, and housing and other issues that might be getting, the, getting in the way of uh, you know, patients' uh, ability to experience good health. Um, so those are the types of things that we can facilitate and organizations can expect to utilize uh, through CM Light. Um, I wanted to uh, ask Dr. Weinberg uh, to, if, if you're on the phone, uh, to just say a few words about uh, our partnership. And uh, first of all, it's great to meet you. Thank you for joining us uh, and uh, would love to, to learn more about Plan A and the work that you all are doing. And um, how uh, perhaps you have utilized a uh, care message as part of your broader communication patient engagement strategy. Sure. Um, hi, I'm Caroline. Um, so I, um, <clears throat> I run an organization called Plan A that focuses on um, increasing access in rural communities to uh, healthcare in general, but primarily reproductive and sexual health. And we um, have plans to, to do more, but at the moment, our, um, our first clinic is operating in um, the Mississippi Delta, which uh, is a community that um, is the, the community we work with is largely uninsured, um, majority live below the poverty level, unemployed. And one of the things that comes up a lot is the fact that um, they also don't really have any access to broadband. Um, so we are kind of in a situation where when we talk to a lot of um, programs or when we were figuring out like how to communicate with patients, there's a lot of, oh, there's this app people can download or they can go to this website. And 
all that jazz, but the reality is that for most of our patients, that's not an option. They either don't have smartphones or they don't have computers at home that have strong enough internet to do things. And so, um, you know, a big part of, I mean, as you all know, because you do this for a living, like a big part of, of healthcare access in general and also the mobile clinic model is meeting people where they are. And so in our situation, working with the community we do, that meant like finding out a way to do seamless text messaging with them to communicate um because uh that's just our most effective way to um to get them information and we can use that for any anything from like you know messaging them to figure out like setting up a phone call doing reminders of things um updating people on um if we recently just did a big event around um uh we recently just did a big event around breast and cervical cancer and we after the event was over sent kind of a review uh, text message to all of our patients being like, you know, you'll get results in two weeks. And um, if you were uninsured, we're going to file this paperwork for you, all of that. But then we also were able to like, right after it, we had in the beginning of the day, like, and again, I'm sure some of you have had this experience, but like everything was a little bit of a mess because we were like, there was more people than we expected and everything was being figured out. So we also just sent a text message at the end of the day that was like, sorry, everything was so hectic. Like, you know, in a in a more professional way basically being like don't hold it against us um so that kind of thing has just been has been really effective um as a way of communicating and then a strength of of kind of the care message and communication for the mobile clinic is that um we input people's zip codes so when we um are going to a specific or people sign up on our website and give us their phone number and their zip codes so when we're going to a certain area, we can just pull the zip codes of the people um, in our database and send them a message being like, we're gonna be in your neighborhood. Um, and that's, you know, that might be something that's unique to the more rural community that we work in, because if you're gonna, if, you know, if you're working in like New York City, um, which is where I'm from, so is <laughs> where, what I compare everything to, you know, saying like, we're gonna be in your neighborhood when you're like one subway stop away isn't, isn't always a huge deal. But when you're working in rural Mississippi, um, saying we're going to be in your neighborhood when the other nearest doctor they could go to is 40 miles away and requires a car, that makes a huge difference. So, um, so it lets us kind of keep track of that and, and seamlessly communicate with people that way. Um, and yeah, I mean, we've, we've just found it an effective way of doing that. And um, it's also like pretty, um, pretty Luddite friendly. <laughs> it's like it, doesn't, it doesn't require a lot of technological knowledge to make it work, um, which is always a plus. Uh, yeah, that's basically, okay, is that helpful? <laughs> Super helpful. Thank you, Dr. Weinberg, really appreciate it. Um, and uh, it's great to, to be working with you all and, and glad you're all seeing success uh, using the platform. Um, uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, sticking around uh, for you know a few more minutes uh, as we wrap up the presentation um, and if folks have questions for you, uh, you know, would love for them to have a chance to ask those questions. Um, so sure. the next thing I wanted to do, thank you, uh, is just go through uh, a quick demo of uh, CM Lite um, and show everybody uh, what that platform actually looks like. Um, so here, what you're seeing on the screen uh, is actually a care message uh, full platform. So it has all the functionality that's within care message. Um, so I will show uh, the functionality that's within CM Light specifically uh, briefly, and then I will also show uh, our COVID-19 messaging library as well. Um, so the first thing that you can do is upload your data into Care Message. So here I have all of my patient information. And in order to do that, all you have to do is go into File Center, and you can upload a file um, with essentially four minimum required fields. Um, could be from any database, could be from an EMR, could be from a patient, uh, uh, some sort of patient database, from a pop health tool, uh, from Salesforce, from whatever, whatever tool you're using to manage your population. Um, and then you just click upload file and you can just match uh, those, those uh, fields and it would upload it uh, within a, a relatively short amount of time. And then once you have your patients in care message, what you can do is categorize your patients into distinct groups. Um, and so here I have, you know, a lot of different groups. Uh, those groups can also be created automatically. So when you use file center, you could say upload this list and create this particular group. Uh, and you can have patients be in multiple groups. So you can have a group of 
all your patients that are overdue for a fit kit, uh, colorectal cancer screening uh, procedure, uh, all your patients that haven't received the COVID vaccine, all your patients that you want to reach out to see if they are interested in getting the vaccine, all your patients that haven't gotten an A1C in a, in a, in a, in a while. So, you know, you can have these distinct groups. And again, you can create those relatively quickly as well. Um, and then once you have your patients categorized, and you, you also will have staff members uh, here with, an account, with accounts, uh, and you can categorize what level of access you want them to have, the two main uh, types of functionality that exist within uh, CM Lite are uh, outreach and messenger. Um, so outreach is a functionality that allows you to uh, have one to many two-way communication. So from, from the clinic to uh, you know, a group of patients that could be your entire population or a, a specific subgroup of patients. And there's no limit to how many patients you can reach through uh, outreach. So for example, if I have this flu outreach group that I wanna reach out to, I can select these 10 patients and then I can select uh, an existing template, which uh, I have uploaded automatically. I can have uploaded automatically into my account. Uh, all these templates are entirely customizable and we have dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of these templates available uh, that have been de demonstrably successful in, in safety net settings. Um, you can also create your own template. So we have organizations that are doing mommy and me classes uh, for uh, you know, new moms and, and they're creating templates about that. And obviously you, you heard some of the specific use cases from Dr. Weinberg and Plan A. Um, so you can create your own templates, you can use existing templates and you can customize uh, any of these templates as well. Uh, within these templates, we also have tags. You can insert information like the name of the provider, uh, the name of the clinic, I should say, the contact number, the first name of the patient. And then you can schedule uh, the message to if I wanna send this on Thursday at uh, you know 9:35 a.m. I can do that. I can repeat if I want to repeat it every couple of months or every you know on specific days of the week. I can do all of those things, and then just click create. And then once you have uh, those templates and those campaigns in Care Message, you can uh, access reporting in real time. Uh, so here, for example, I have this flu uh, outreach that I've done with 30 patients. I have a 100% retention rate, uh, which is specifically used for measuring what is the, the uh, uh, percentage of people that successfully received or to whom the uh, message was successfully delivered. Um, so that's 100%. And then response rate is a measure of how many patients responded. If it was a uh, message that asked for a response, um, you can have multiple different types of messages. So you can have uh, uh, open-ended questions. You can have no response needed, just, just a one-way multiple choice, and then yes or no. So for example, if it's multiple choice, you can add specific responses that the patient would receive if they respond with a, a A or a B or a C or a D. Uh, same thing with yes or no. Um, and then once you, uh, just to go back to the reporting, uh, you also have access to filters in addition to looking at a uh, global view of your population. So if we only wanted to look at patients that responded no, I have not gotten my flu shot this season. I can, you can just look at those and download that as a, as a report as well. Um, and then you also have the ability, if you wanna look at a specific patient, let's say I wanna look at Desiree, uh, I can do that and it'll show me, um, you know, let's say I'm interested in Desiree McNeil as a patient, seeing what, what she wrote. Uh, you can look at that information again in real time uh, by the specific patient as well. Um, and then let's say, you know, patient responds in a certain way and you wanna reach out to them, this is where the other functionality that's within CM Lite uh, is particularly valuable, which is Messenger. So Messenger is what allows you uh, to reach out to a patient on a one-on-one -on -one basis and you can have multiple staff members from your, pop, from your clinic communicate with that patient um, on an ongoing basis to just show you an example of what that looks like here. For example, if I click on Amanda, as a patient, I can see all the communication that you know Amanda has had with the clinic, and um, you know again, it's it's catalog it's cataloged. Um, all, it's it's it, you know you can have multiple staff members communicating with Amanda. So here you have Helen communicating. Here you have another patient communicating, another person communicating, um, and that allows there to be a bi-directional two-way dialogue, which is uh, particularly valuable, and we have seen be particularly useful um, uh, to avoid 
uh, the phone tag uh, uh, situation and being able to get a response in an asynchronous capacity uh, with, with patients that uh, may be at work, they may be busy, uh, may not pick up unrecognized phone numbers, but will definitely pick up uh, or will definitely read uh, a text message um, and, and respond to it. So th those are the types of things that we've seen Messenger be extremely useful for. Um, we also have templates within Messenger. So you can actually you create these templates even for one-on-one -on -one messaging um, in case you're having those conversations with lots and lots of uh, your patients. Um, so I, I will, I will um, stop here. Uh, there's a lot of additional functionality as you can clearly see within Care Message but because the purpose of this uh, webinar is to share specifically functionality that's within CM Light. Uh, I will forego that opportunity uh, for some other uh, time and uh, uh, would love to pause for the remaining seven, eight minutes that we have uh, for questions. And again, thank you uh, to Dr. Weinberg. Uh, thank you to the MHA team, Elizabeth and everybody else for giving us this opportunity. And thank you to everybody who's attended this uh, particular call and webinar uh, to learn about uh, what we're doing. So, Benit, thank you so much. I think there are a couple of questions. So the first one is, what languages is this available in besides English? It's a great question. So we support a full capability uh, for all uh, languages. Uh, uh, however, the uh, I'm, I shouldn't say all languages, multiple languages. Um, I think we have tested uh, Care Message with about 35 languages, um, but the product experience is ideal for English and Spanish, and all the content is available in English and Spanish. Um, for other languages beyond English and Spanish, uh, you can certainly use uh, Care Message uh, for the most part uh, to communicate in those other languages. However, the experience is not ideal. For example, uh, if somebody uh, were to respond yes or no, they would not be able to respond yes or no in that particular language. They would have to respond in English, for example, uh, yes or no. Uh, which unlike Spanish, they could respond C or no, and they would the system would understand. So there are specific things that make it uh, not an ideal experience for both the customer for the for the clinic and the patient. Um, we are working on that, and that's one of our big priorities in 2021 is to make it a more ideal experience for other languages beyond English and Spanish. But certainly, if you wanted to get a message out in Korean, for example, if you wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation in Arabic. We can certainly support that and, and our team can help with that in advance of a more complete uh, uh, functionality around other languages. So we have a question about security concerns. They want to know if it's encrypted, HIPAA compliance, where are we with that? Absolutely. And I just want to share this slide uh, just to share. Um, I realize I forgot to share this slide. Uh, if folks are interested in learning about CM Light and accessing CM Light, uh, you can submit a request through our website at caremessage.org. There's an arrow at the very top right and it'll take you to a form. Uh, you can also email me, uh, Vinit at caremessage.org and I'll, I'll pass, uh, uh, I'll connect you with the appropriate uh, member of our team. Um, in terms of security and encryption, um, Care Message is uh, fully encrypted in terms of our database and our application. There's end-to-end -end, uh, SSL encryption built uh, directly into Care Message. All the information that's stored is stored in HIPAA compliance servers. Um, so from an application perspective, uh, uh, Air Message is fully encrypted as a platform. Um, the, the part that is not encrypted because it cannot be encrypted at all is the actual text message when it goes out to the patient. Um, so we have safeguards in place uh, to help address that, um, including things like letting the patient know that uh, texting is not encrypted and we, we don't recommend sending very sensitive PHI uh, through a text message. Uh, we also uh, provide uh, clear instructions uh, and, and encourage our partners to provide clear instructions to patients uh, around how they can opt out, uh, which is very simple. It's just texting the word stop or alto in Spanish. Uh, and then uh, there are other safeguards that we, that we uh, ensure uh, to make sure that uh, you know, we are obviously protecting PHI and that we are uh, providing the, the adequate experience uh, that's in alignment with the HIPAA privacy rule, the HIPAA security rule, as well as the uh, Telephone Consumer Protection Act, the TCPA, which also governs the use of text messaging uh, from, from uh, healthcare providers to, to patients. 
Wonderful. I know we've only got a few minutes left. We have a couple more questions. So I know Care Message Light, which is totally donor funded and at no cost to the clinics, does not integrate um, with EMRs. But someone was asking if care, the regular full care message does um, integrate with any type of EMRs. Yes, uh, Care Message Full Platform integrates with uh, a number of EMRs, including uh, uh, Epic, NextGen, Greenway, Athena Health, eClinical e e Works, a uh, number of others that I'm, uh, G-Centricity, a number of others that I'm not exactly recalling at the moment. Wonderful. Um, you also interface with population health tools like Azara and Relevant and i i Thank you. Jennifer wants to know if you have an average percentage increase you see from your uh, members in using text versus calling for patient contacts and scheduling. Um, it's a great question. We don't have uh, necessarily an average, um, but we have a lot of data points that show that um, it is it is quite significant. In some cases, it's um, you know at least uh, double, uh, if not more. Um, uh, you know, uh, in terms of the the increase in uh, uh, ability to, to contact, ability to reach, uh, response rates um, uh, to specific questions or data data requests. Um, not always. There are certain situations where it, it's not maybe as successful, but in the situations where we have seen, uh, you know, folks switching over from doing phone calls to using texting, um, it is not unusual for us to see a two to three x increase uh, in in ability to connect, ability to reach, and response rates. So one of the things that I've personally found so interesting about Care Message is um, the templates that you offer, but also the resources you offer. Um, I know you have um, different modules on different diseases. And so Caroline, I was curious if you've used any of those modules yet with your program. Um, and if not, um, Vineet, maybe you could just tell us about a couple of those and especially which ones are available on the Care Light. Caroline, can you unmute? She may have stepped away. So Vinit, you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. Um, so I'll show uh, briefly some of the modules that, that we have available at Care Message, uh, specifically around the vaccine, or just hopefully give an example of the kinds of templates that organizations can expect to uh, uh, have access to. Um, this in particular is a public resource because we didn't want any of our COVID messaging to be behind a paywall. Um, and so this is something that even if you're using another platform for communication, you can use this messaging. Um, a lot of our non-COVID messaging is, is obviously um, protected by intellectual property and that will have to have a, an agreement in place to, to share that, but we'll share this as a resource after the call. Uh, but hopefully this gives you a sense of the kind of messaging that our team develops. A lot of this messaging is developed in, in consultation with clinical advisors. Uh, we take into account uh, literacy levels. So all of the messaging is at a sixth grade reading level 80% of the messaging is at a fourth grade reading level. We use the flesh Kincaid uh, uh, reading level methodology. Uh, and then there's messaging that not only um, is one way uh, going out to the patient, but there's a lot of messaging that asks the patient for a response. So for example, here's a template that is asking the patient about what concerns they have about the COVID vaccine um, and uh, giving them uh, responses back to let them know that uh, you know, what, what specific advice, um, you know, the clinic has for uh, the specific concern that the patient is sharing. Um, and this is, again, all customizable uh, by the clinic. So there's just a lot of work that our team does. And this, this, these templates are getting constantly uh, updated based upon the data that we're seeing, based upon the messaging, based upon what we're seeing be the most successful in terms of uh, the right tone, the right verbiage, the right uh, frequency, a lot of those factors influence the eventual success of the messaging in terms of outcomes. Wonderful. I don't see any other questions in the chat. If anybody has one, feel free to put it in now. But I just want to say that, um, first of all, I think this is such a wonderful and amazing opportunity that you've been able to have philanthropy fund this care message light, especially during this crazy time in our country. And so if you could put back up there again, Benit, um, how people can reach out to you. Um, to sign up for Care Message Light and get onboarded. And then also I'm sure they're gonna want information about the full one, which um, I'm pleased to say, um, I view as being very reasonable, the full um, package of Care Message. Um, and um, in addition, um, I just wanted to also say that we do know we have several mobile programs who are using um, Care Message. So if you need to be connected to any of those directly, um, so um, we can go from there. And Caroline, if you wanna unmute yourself, I think um, we'll, we'll end with you. 
Uh, no, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't have anything in particular to end with. Um, just you know, thank you for the opportunity to to talk about it. And if anyone has questions um, about how we've implemented it, I'm happy to happy to talk. Wonderful. So you can always reach out to the association, um, mobilehca.org. Our, our contact information is there, or you can reach out to Vanit directly. Um, and we hope to see a lot of you this fall um, on our virtual conference in September. Registration is open and um, you'll be getting a follow-up message from um, Care Message as well with um, this information. So everybody enjoy their afternoon. Stay safe.